Hi, everybody. This is <laughs> this is Dr. Gill from Pulsar Health, and we have Pamela. Pamela Dusizia, Muse Medi Spa, and our special guest that Pamela found is uh, doc, Dr. Chuck Robertson. And um, Chuck, you and I know each other. Well, you've known my husband for years. For years, yeah. <laughs> and sure. your wife has too. And so uh, we have recently. Uh, learn to know each other through your compounding pharmacy called Compounding Dark Docs. Can you Correct. give us a little background about you? Um, well, I started out in pharmacy um, in hospital and psychiatric hospital and then worked for 12 years in geriatrics and um, a clinical pharmacist in geriatrics. And it got to the point where we were doing 1,500 to 2,000 scripts a day and I had a blood pressure cuff at my desk. So <laughs> decided it's time to do something different. So we started uh, Compounding Docs 16 years ago in March, um, devoted it mainly for women's hormones. So basically we've been 85% women's hormones for uh, the better part of 16 years. Good, 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 good. Well, and, well we thought, and, oh, go ahead, doctor. And the, the, uh, the reason that I'm interested in this, and I know it's, uh, it's weird, why is a plastic surgeon talking immunology, but uh, I've had a lot of um, basic science research in immunology. I did um, over three years at NIH in the immunology of cancer, and I did a couple of years at Pittsburgh in basic science immunology of trauma, and I've got a master's in biotech from Hopkins. So I'm very interested in immunology, and Pulsar Health is beauty based on health, uh, built on health. And so uh, immune, the immune system is essential to the way we heal and, and how our general health is, as are our hormones and, uh, and stress. And because what bigger stress is there than having a surgery? You know, if I'm gonna cut you, it's a bit stressful. <laughs> so uh, so it's, it's all of it kind of wraps together. Uh, and that's why uh, I'm, I'm contributing to, uh, for the immune segment of, the, of our webinar series. And I'm so thrilled to have Dr. Robertson because he talked pathways with me and I was like no pathways it has to no be pathways. and I was like let's talk pathways <laughs> he's like oh, okay so so but we thought this would be a great segment for um, our last week here on on this series that we've been doing because stress and hormones and, and how our whole bodies just all work together as as one perfect um you know when it's all working perfectly <laughs> one, one perfect together, yes when everybody's working together in there um and stress has a huge impact on on not only our immunology but also our our hormones so uh dr gill i think you had a couple of um kind of just high level questions just to kind of get us into what we're talking about or yeah, so um, so I know that uh, Dr. Robertson, you um, deal with a lot of uh, supplements um, that deal with stress as well as the hormonal side of things. And I thought Correct. we should get the, the stress side done first, and then we can talk about the hormonal side. Uh, and um, obviously, stress affects the immune response. And you you have uh, some specific herbs that you wanted to recommend to us as to uh, as to things that people can look for that can help uh, help them adjust to their stress levels. Uh, yes, as far as just general health, and then for those who are mildly um, stressed out, uh, all you would need is like Eleuthera, uh, Rhodiola, Ashwagandha, um, and sometimes licorice root, those sorts of things. But then when you get to the point where there's two different kinds of stress, once you've, um, once cortisol is rushing through your body, you're hyped up you're you're frazzled um, with those kinds of patients um, what we need to do is add things like um, phosphatidylserine and l-theanine so that it kind of brings everybody down and back to normal and you still keep with those same basic um, herbs and then the other way is if the patient is just down and out and um, and that's when you start using glandulars and glandulars basically is just a bovine uh, pituitary, or not pituitary, adrenal extract. So uh, to put that into English for people, <laughs> bovine cow, <laughs> and bovine cow, yeah. Stuff, the so adrenal as opposed stuff to bovine pig, 
Yeah, because what happens is you have something in your brain and that releases, um, it's adrenocorticotrophic hormone that, that goes from your brain and it goes to your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands sit next to your kidneys and those, uh, those if they're stimulated for a long, 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 long time, you can get what's called adrenal fatigue. Uh, and so that's what Dr. Robertson was referring to as glandular replacements where the, the because the, the whole gland is, uh, is what's termed fatigued, then you, you kind of use, the, you're actually replacing more on that, on the macro level like that. So is that correct? correct? Is that the correct? That is correct. And can I ask a quick question on that? So, I mean, okay. we were talking right before this about I'm the high level, a lot of stress going on in my life. I'm always like, I'm either go, 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 or I'm out for the day. <laughs> right. Um, so how do you determine whether somebody just, you know, is on an herbal replacement kind of situation or their adrenals are really needing some support? Well, I mean, granted, you do a cortisol level, you know, um, there's 24 hour urine is probably the most, the best way, but the, the most inconvenient way to test for cortisol. Um, we can do a blood I, level, a blood I level has to be done. Yeah, the, the 24 hour urine is definitely the way to go um, because your levels are supposed to be high in the morning and low in the evening, but people Correct. get so messed up that you need that 24 hours of urine. And, uh, and just taking a, a random blood test without having it being stimulated or doing a, some sort of test where you're, you're, yeah. you're checking the response to something, uh, it's just too unreliable. So I'm totally in Dr. Robertson's camp here. So far, we're- Okay, and, and the other thing is that there's um, four point cortisol tests that can be either blood spot or saliva. I'm not a huge proponent of saliva, even though theoretically it's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as hormone replacement is concerned, especially topical, it's just that uh, in practice, it's, it's semi unreliable. So we still do some blood cortisol. You just have to pull it by 830 in the morning because that's when you peak. But the whole point is some people will peak in the morning, but then they'll peak at 6 p.m. at night, and that's going to keep them up. They'll peak you know? when they see their mother-in-law. <laughs> exactly. But the whole point is that, um, you know, basically cortisol peaks between 6 and 8.30 in the morning. And that's what gives you the jump start to get your butt out of bed and get moving for the day. And so if it's low and you need some sort of supplementation because you're going to be dragging for most of the day. Yeah, and so that's where I find myself these days. I used to be a get up and go in the morning, and now I'm like hitting the snooze, hitting right. the snooze some more. I'm like, okay, I need to. <laughs> like say, yeah, you also it's 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 the thyroid works in concert as well because mm -hmm. the thyroid is extremely important in energy, um, in metabolism, um, brittle hair, hair loss, those sorts of things. You know, things that you look for if you're fatigued one is cortisol the other is test for uh, your thyroid and and i just want to point out that when we when we're going through these situations the the herbs and supplements are good but you also need to take responsibility for your lifestyle and so a lot of our webinar series right. has been lifestyle 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 because you don't want to put a band-aid on on, a, on a something that's bleeding out you know what i'm saying right, you know, right. Wanna, right. Wanna, exactly well, lifestyle changes are definitely needed yeah, so get to the cause, try to stop the cause, and, and then if, it, if that and, and, the, and the hormones are, uh, then the supplements are not enough, like we have, you can have adaptogens too that are very good for stress as well. Um, if, if, you, if those are not enough, that's when you want to um, get your levels checked and, uh, and uh, make sure that um, the, all your different hormones are, are working in concert because you don't know which hormones are out of balance. As Dr. Robertson said, they're, 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 they interplay with each other. So it could be a thyroid, it could be a cortisol, even insulin levels can be out of whack. Yeah, for example, those with glucose intolerance, if you eat something, then you get really sleepy. That's usually because you've spiked your insulin. And so you're tired because you're 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 not having an appropriate response to the food you ate so it's they all kind of work together and you have to um, you have to piece out what the problems can be in in when we take our history uh, and and then try and figure out okay which tests are the most likely to give us the result but at the end of the day I just want to say it is your responsibility to, to look at your lifestyle too right right, right. because stress is both emotional and physical so you know it just depends right. on what type of stress you have 
uh, whether you and, have and I a think, strenuous job or whether right. you have a loss of a spouse or whatever kind of stress there is, COVID-19. Yeah, uh, I think that this is caused... Stress. Go ahead. No, well, I, I mean, that, that's the whole point is that there's different types of stress, so you have to treat it different types of ways. So that's part of the, the history taking process, that along with labs and speaking with the patient right. is how you figure out how to treat. And that's what I think when, you know, when we started this whole series, we started saying, okay, COVID-19, like everybody's at home. There's a lot, there's so much uncertainty right now. I think as we were saying before we started this, being a business owner of, of two businesses and really not only experiencing the uncertainty of business, but the uncertainty of finances, the uncertainty of the health of myself, as well as the health of our loved ones. And, you know, just um, really it's, it's stresses in all different directions that um, I'm sorry, my computer is trying to want to restart <laughs> on me real quick here with, uh, so I'm going to stop talking so I can just get this off my screen. So you guys start talking and let me make yeah, sure I have this. Time with, with stress, as you said, there's different types and levels of stress, um, but um, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I was, I was going to say um, about, you, you can control some things, like you can control your routine and, and your schedule, which does help reduce some of the, the variables of the stress. Um, but, um, and then it's important to add those habits in like the, like the deep breathing. And uh, I know you meditate too. Um, those are important, but um, with the, uh, when you do have uh, excess stress, you want to make sure that there's nothing else going on if it continues for longer than a few days. Because if you are having levels of, uh, of stress that are high, it can affect your heart. Uh, it can affect your, um, your um, GI system. It can affect multiple things. And so if you've already, your health is already kind of so-so, you don't want to add that on top. Uh, and right. so it's important not to ignore it, which is part of why we're having this series is it's important to, to, to be aware that that's going on and try to deal with each different type as, as well as you can. Right. And, and with that even being said, like the levels of stress, I think that so many are feeling, feeling with the COVID-19 and with all of the uncertainty and even now with going back to work and what that's going to look like and how long is this going to go for. All of those things, as we were speaking earlier, they, they spike, you know, your, your, your cortisol, right? Correct. Which then weakens our immune system to a certain which extent. Then, which then releases a lot of glucose um, mm -hmm. in order for the flight or flight syndrome. Because when you produce a lot of cortisol, it releases glucose to give you energy to, to do what you got to do to get away from the stress. Right. Um, but then you can burn out you know, and you can get hyperglycemia and you can get what's called dysglycemia. So it's, it's up, it's down, it's all over the place. And that doesn't help your immune system either. Right. And right. as Dr. Roberts is saying, it's very important to, um, uh, that you have an immune response, but you don't want to go in either direction too much or too little. Just like dampening the immune system completely is not good either because, for example, you need, uh, you need to uh, make your secretory IgAs for, for, to protect your mucosa. And so you can't just like dampen it completely. And the cortisol does dampen things. Cortisol calms and dampens, but sometimes you need that response to fight a virus. So you want to make sure that you you try to target it appropriately. I know they all come down to a flight or flight and glucose, but you want to try to target what the problem is so that you're not doing a, a total damp. You're 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 appropriately uh, like boosting some aspects and dampening other aspects. So does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Uh, hopefully, it makes sense to everyone out there because <laughs> you know the, the what is it um, I was trying to say. Um, you, you, what, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> sorry. Do you want to tell us how, how the how some of the stress can affect the hormones, like pregnenolone steel? Oh, cool okay. Thing. All right. So here we go with the pathway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <help. laughs> Here's the thing: you actually need cholesterol in order to make all of the sex hormones. So cholesterol gets converted into pregnenolone, and then pregnenolone gets converted either goes down the left-hand side into progesterone and then in three steps later into cortisol. Or if you go to the right, 
it goes into DHEA, which then gets converted into testosterone and estradiol, which those two turn into uh, estrone and estriol. But the whole point is, if your cortisol, you're going this side heavy, you're making progesterone to make cortisol, you're robbing the estrogen and testosterone and DHEA. So that's why a lot of times when we find people like this, we'll use pregnenolone and DHEA to rejuvenate the adrenal glands as well, and to try and raise uh, estrogen levels and testosterone levels. And that's called pregnenolone steel. I love that term. It's so cool. And this is all in, in this is all in a bioidentical situation, correct? Yeah. We're not correct. We only we only do bioidentical. I just wanted no. to because a lot of people get confused about this happens yeah. in the body. Not this is not necessarily what hormones you're you're being given, like by the right. given, but this is yeah. just going on in your body. Well, I'm talking about when uh, right, but when he's talking about but when we go with giving things, yeah, we're, when we're we talking, go with replacement. When right. we go with replacement here, we do nothing but bioidentical because right. um, everybody knows what Premarin stands for. Pregnant well, and that's why I think a lot of people have a misconception when you start hearing hormone replacement. They, you know, they take it to that whole other level of, you know, the, the synthetic. Um, right. That, right. Premarin and uh, Medroxy or Provera, um, right. both of those are synthetic. Right. Yeah. And when you when you replace, um, sometimes it's not the right thing to replace a hormone, even if the level is low. For example, testosterone. Sometimes um, the the stress causes aromatase to to make to make testosterone into estradiol so it seems like your testosterone levels are low but what you need to do is work on the aromatase the enzyme rather than the testosterone so you're not losing your testosterone so anti-inflammatories can calm the aromatase so it might not be that you need to replace your hormone you might need to fix what's where it's disappearing off to so that's why it's it if you just keep pouring it in and there's a bucket in the boat it's just going to keep pouring out so you right. Want to right. make sure that so you but you cut that off with like an astrazole or uh, with crisis. Uh, and and we look at all of that through uh, lab work, correct? You, you're pulling correct. specific labs to specifically correct. look at crisis. If, you're, if testosterone your testosterone level. level is low and your estrogen level is high, um, then you know what you've got to do. You've got to stop the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. Right. And there's a whole thing too about free testosterone versus... Uh, sex binding, you know, versus total total testosterone, total, right. free testosterone, and sex hormone binding globulin. And sex right. hormone binding globulin is like albumin is a transport protein. It picks up something and it from the stomach or the hepatic portal vein, and it drops it off where it needs to go. But sex hormone binding globulin irreversibly binds like testosterone, so you're not going to get as much. So you have to use things like boron to bring down sex hormone binding globulin. Right. Sex hormone so binding. To, oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, I think sex to like to the average person follows, listening. Follows TSH. It follows estradiol, TSH. Um, what else? Uh, but if your TSH is high, so your your hypothyroidism, uh, or if your estradiol is too high, then your sex hormone binding globulin is going to be high as well. And, and one other point I wanted to make um, to, the, those are excellent points Dr. Robertson brought out. One other point, and TSH for people who don't know is thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, oh. which makes your, makes your thyroid, uh, thyroxine from the thyroid gland. Um, I'm used to teaching students, so that's why I'm used to like <laughs> explaining things. Um, the, uh, the, uh, sometimes it's the, when things change, uh, it's, you can actually have too much of the free amount rather than too little. For example, when you lose weight, hopefully happening to me soon, when you lose weight, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's stored in your fat. And so like uh, estrogens can be stored in your fat. Estrone especially. Go ahead. I said estrone especially. Mm -hmm. And what happens, Dr. Robson? Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, estrone has three metabolites, um, and two of the metabolites have been linked to breast cancer. So we try to steer clear of that. If somebody has a high estrone level, we give them diendol methane or DIM, which is um, derived from cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli and cauliflower. But in order to get the same effect as a capsule, you'd have to eat a truckload of broccoli and, and have to um, put up with all the gas. 
I was going to say, that'd be uncomfortable. <laughs> And you like veggies, don't you? I love veggies, <laughs> but too much broccoli and cauliflower is not yeah, a good situation. Yeah, it's not a good thing. No, it's not a pretty thing. So it's easier to take a couple capsules a day and get rid of it. <laughs> and so all of this is is basically we are we are such a um, a complex or organism, aren't we? When we all everything has to be kind of working in balance with each other, and it's constantly changing based on what we're, you know, what we're being exposed to, like we were saying, as well as what we're doing, as well as even what our age is, because our body just starts doing things differently, especially, with, you know, with women's hormones. And that can go on for years. Um, I wish I knew about uh, bioidentical hormone replacement 10 years ago <laughs> when I started the whole menopause, you know, circle. Right, exactly. And then there's andropause, you know, I mean, men, right. this, the same thing happens to men at age 40. Um, right. And, and men, I don't think are comfortable really talking about it. Um, th nowadays, there's more people, especially yeah. the gym rats and things like that, the people yeah. who are, are becoming more educated. So, right as opposed to 10 years ago when, yeah, you're right. They don't want to talk about it, but now- Yeah, it's like it, you don't, you don't the, have to go through this, <laughs> you know? Correct. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of men are on testosterone though. Don't you find Dr. Robertson, is that, is that going, growing market for you? Well, there's, unfortunately, there's a lot of profiteering going on in men's health. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of people that I see that are doing high dose testosterone with sermorellin and all these different supplements and everything else. And I had one of my nutritionists look at what was being prescribed for this one guy. And he's like, one, his hair is going to start falling out. And two, he's going to have kidney failure within the next six months. You know, I mean, it, it's just, it's become too much of a business as opposed to actually taking care of people. So how do, how do people, besides coming to us, how do people know what to look for, what to not look for when looking at providers? Well, I think the first thing you do is you call me or you call your local compounding pharmacist to find out who prescribes for you, you know, because basically in one week, uh, I turned down seven men's clinics in one week because I knew what they were doing. So, I mean, most compounders um, have integrity, you know, and in order to find that, you at least look for a PCAB or an ACHC uh, accredited uh, compounding pharmacy because they are held to the highest standard. That's so such a great, that's such a great, a great, great, great. Um, I have to give a shout out to uh, Rachel from the Pick Lines uh, Plus as well. They're, they're a great compounding pharmacy too. We had them oh, on, uh, last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, infusion. Yep, big time. We yeah, do that here as well. That's um the whole, the whole, because there are so many different compounding pharmacies out there, and it is really confusing, and there's so many like bioidentical replacement hormone places, and, you know, you, it gets confusing to the consumer, like, how do I know where I'm going? And then when you start wanting to, like, hey, we need to look at your labs, you know, we're, if we're going to do this, we need to look at your labs again in this amount of time. Well, they start going, well, wait a minute. I don't want to keep looking at my labs. I just, well, you have to because things well, are yeah. continually changing. You know? Right. It, yeah. I mean, it changes. Um, it's a circadian rhythm. It changes right. during the day, let alone during the month or year. So that um, would be kind of a red flag for somebody if they were getting therapy somewhere and they were not necessarily needing to get their lab work done very often. That might be like, hey, this might not be great. Yeah. Right, exactly. And like I said before, um, what we do is I take a, you know, I basically do a consultation, look at the, review the patient's labs, um, review and talk with the patient about their symptoms, their height, their weight, that sort of thing, and then start them on a regimen. And then six weeks later, we draw the first set of labs to see right. where you are. How, how did you respond? Do we need to tweak it? And then after that, once you're feeling good, six months, six months, six months, and then maybe a year, you right. know, after, after a year or two. Yeah, I have and the, then if you start I, like feeling, go ahead. I have the same post, but I, I, before I start them on anything, I get a full set of labs. Oh, you gotta get a baseline. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Very true. Sorry yeah. about that. I, well, that's what I said. I, I go over their labs and then. Yeah. 
So yeah. Right. You, yeah, you the need same a- kind of thing. I mean, like at, at Muse Medispa, we were we had our own in-house endocrinologist for a while, but we just don't necessarily have the space. So Dr. Robertson and I are having that discussion about, you know, kind of partnering up a little bit that way, you know, not not anything in, in but because we just have so many patients that they really are looking, they trust us and you know, we just don't necessarily have the facility to, you know. Yeah, and like you say, health and wellness uh, are one and the same, you right. know, and beauty, you know. Right. So uh, if you want your skin to be look good, you've got to have enough estrogen. You right. Know? We were talking about that the other day, even on nutrition, is, you know, what's going on on the inside is directly reflected on the outside, you know. Right. So if you're not, if you're paying all of this money to get, you know, cosmetic things done, you really want to make sure that you're taking care of the inside so that the two are really, you know, um, holding each other's hands throughout the process, you know. Correct. Correct. So do we have time for one more question or are there any questions from any of our um, participants? Dr. Gill? Uh if there are no questions, I can just make a comment. I don't see any questions on the webinar. Um, okay. So uh, I think that um, uh, there, there's a lot of complicated information we've covered and uh, just skim the top off. But to summarize it for people, you want to um, you want to see where you're at in relation to where you're normally at. Like, is your health where it, you where you normally sit, uh, or are you having like new symptoms or new problems if you're having new symptoms or problems like then you have to judge like how severe are they do i need to go to my pcp get checked out or you can obviously come to me or dr robertson or whoever um do you need to get checked out when you get checked out you want to make sure that you you like tell them about whether your diet's changed, what kind of stresses you're having, uh, what kind of symptoms. They should take your heart rate, your blood pressure. They'll, tell, they'll check your, um, you'll, they'll do a physical exam and they'll check your levels for uh, your levels. First of all, they'll check, look at your like um, your blood count uh, and make sure those levels are right, your salts are right. And then they, if it's more complicated, then they'll look at your, your blood, blood sugar and whether your HbA1c is being high. If they, um, beyond that, they, um, if they they, they'll look at um, simple um, endocrine tests like your levels of uh, thyroid hormone, TSH. Um, they have these panels um, that we, we send off. And then based on those panels, we can then do further tests like the 24-hour cortisol if we need to. Um, so there's levels of tests that you do. But once you get those blood tests done, then you want to start thinking about, okay, what supplements do I want to take while I'm waiting for the test results to come back? That's when you can be starting to think of looking, okay, I, I could look at these adaptive adaptogens or those these um, supplements that reduce uh, levels uh, that help you cope with stress better uh, and to some and then you can if you can adjust your diet to have more vegetables in it if you can manage to have some kind of routine in your schedule that will also help your body adapt to stress a little better and then when you get your lab test back then you can go through them with your doctor and see okay so what was wrong and get an explanation the more you understand the more you know the more you can watch how your own healthcare is going. I'm all about taking personal in like being involved in your own healthcare. Um, and then once you, you you see what the problem is, well, how can you treat it? Can you treat it? Which part which part of the system is wrong? Do you have too much, too little? Are there other things that are affecting it? Like what what do you what's the core thing that you need to start treatment with? Then you have to see like how are you responding? Are is your heart rate getting better? Are you is your is your energy getting better? Over a few weeks you should start to get better. And if you're not then you need to go back back and say like I'm not better you know or like we need to look at this some more uh, and then over a course of time then you, you kind of like you, you work with your doctor so it's a long-term trust relationship but but you should know what's going on you should feel comfortable asking okay what what are we doing and why and uh and then uh, and then talk about like, okay, I've heard of these bioidentical hormones. Am I a good candidate? There's pros and cons to everything. You could get a blood clot or breast cancer from too much estrogen, you know, so there's pros and cons. And so when you talk to your doctor, make sure you get the cons as well as the pros, because you need to know both. Um, and, and then you can make an educated decision because it is about having that information, having that choice so that you can, you know where to go. So what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, um, as far as the blood clots are concerned, that comes mostly from oral estrogen intake. So that's why we kind of steer clear of people, women taking oral 
oral estrogen and oral testosterone because the testosterone gets methylated. So those are the two that are topical. The progesterone is great to be given at bedtime, especially for high strung women. Um, helps you sleep. <laughs> really and, does. And it helps you sleep. It helps you sleep and helps you be calm during the day, orally, not topically, orally. Right. And then and, uh, DHD the, and pregnenolone are both uh, better oral, and pregnenolone is the mother of all hormones. And the other thing I wanted to add, too, which we didn't get a, a, a chance to, but just to throw it out there is, is one of the reasons why I think we do see a lot of men at a younger age having testosterone issues, as well as a lot of women having uh, high estrogen uh, issues is because of all the xenoestrogens that are in our yep. environment, which are, EPA. you know, all of the, the plastics and just, you know, the, the chemicals and everything and the processing of everything. They're all in the air. It's everywhere, right? Xenoestrogens. And yep. so it's making our body kind of respond in a way that we have estrogen kind of overload, you know? Yep. All right. Not myself. I'm not even a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> You're very well read. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Okay, bye Thank bye. you so much. We'll be in, 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 oh, what are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we are doing, oh, we have okay. my check and Jennifer uh, with Spa Mariana. Oh, I'm so excited for tomorrow with them. They have, they're they really good friends of both Dr. Gill's and I's. Uh, we're, we're all in kind of the same group together. And we're going to be talking about, I think, healthy oils and um He's been in, in uh, massage, like, oh, he just got back from Thailand not too long ago, <laughs> dealing with okay. massage. So he does a lot of essential oils. He's to do massages. There, no, I mean, he, yeah, he just, he's, he's amazing. So yeah, She was a private chef, too. So she was a private chef. Yeah. So join us tomorrow at 3. This is our last week, and uh, we have a great lineup this week. And um, that's about it. And all of our information will be on YouTube of how you can get a hold of Dr. Robertson, Dr. Gill, or myself. And uh, if you guys want to have any, you know, further consultations or whatever, all that information will be on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channels. Okay. All right. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye.